anymore. We'll see about that. I have to hear it from David yet. No matter what you say, he won't change his mind. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Get out of my house. The trouble is, we can't get to this room from underneath. The bluestone foundations go right along. David? In here, Pat. Oh, well, what about from this wall? Same again. G'day, Mrs. Hamilton. We've got problems. They sure did a good job when they built these old places. <laughs> Too good a job, I'd say. Right, sure. Come and have a look. I'll show you. Uh, would you mind if we did it later? I've got something very important to discuss with Mr. Palmer. Sure. Give us a call when you're ready. Thanks to you, I have just had one of the most embarrassing experiences of my life. I was around helping Lynn when Beryl arrived. Well, what happened? She threw me out. Oh, I'm sorry, Pat. No. I didn't mean it happened like that. Well, that's nice to know. What were you going to do, right? Why, David? When you went to Sydney, we were getting along so well. We were making it work. You always knew if there was a chance that Beryl and I could get back together again, I'd take it. I still love her, Pat. I, I'm sorry. What about us? I've given up everything for you. And this is the second time you've walked out on me. Why? You knew how I felt. Oh, OK, we were giving it a go. But you knew Beryl always came first. Anyway, if we're honest with each other, we wouldn't have worked out between. It would. It was but working. Once, it maybe, was... but not any more. We're too different. Too set in our own ways. I was trying, David. I'm sorry, Pat. I promise you I can change. I know I can. You can't go back to Beryl after all that she's put you through. She's neurotic, David. She can't make you happy. Pat! I, I know that we can be a family. You, me, John and Angela. Look, you're not even listening, Pat. I called on Beryl when I was up there because I couldn't stop thinking about her. Even when I was with you. I'm sorry. At least you, you could give us a chance. I made up my mind. I only came around here to, to tell you face to face. That's all. David, please. I'll call you later. When you've had time to think about it. I'm sorry. Now, what if he doesn't want to barrack for Hawthorne when he grows up? You're joking. Look at his eyes. See, one's brown and one's yellow. Oh. It's in his blood. <laughs> no, no matter what team he supports, he's certainly going to be heard. Can he scream? Yeah, especially at 2 o'clock in the morning, I bet. Always at 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Won't be long before he sleeps through, though. Can't wait. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know when I was well off. You kids and the family. I'm sorry I put you through it, Lil. The main thing is you're back. We had to celebrate tonight. Yeah, it's a bit late to make a path. Ah, uh, there's nothing wrong with the next best thing. Boston bun. Well, why not? I even had Davy nibbling some the other day. Well, that's going to stop, young man. Psst. Hey, you hear what your name said? Now she's here, you don't know what you're in for. It was hard, Angie. I knew she'd be upset, but I didn't think she'd take it that bad. Should I go round? No, someone should. Okay. I am doing the right thing. Of course. You and Beryl should be together. And once Mother gets over the initial shock, she'll understand. Probably even be happy for you. Uh, can you run me over? Sure. I'll just grab a jacket. Is Mrs. Bartlett there? It's Patricia Hamilton speaking. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hamilton. She's in service, having a week's holiday. Oh. Do you know where she's staying? She didn't say. She wanted to get right away from things. Sorry, I can't help you. That's all right. Thank you very much.
Mrs. Hamilton, would you like to come and have a look at the problem? No. Just get on with it, will you? It's what I pay you for. We need your advice. Will you just go? Yes, Mrs. Hamilton. kids are next door. That wasn't easy. Pat's taken it pretty hard. Yes, well, she wasn't too happy when she left here. Well, so I gathered. It has been tough on her, Beryl. Now, that's the second time I've done it to her. You sound as though you're sorry. No, I'm not. I just don't like seeing her upset. Well, not like that. You, um, you still feel something for her, don't you? I can't help feeling sorry for her. David... You're going to have to decide once and for all whether it really is over. I'm not going to say it's, it's her or me, but I do want to know where I stand. We've got no hope with Patricia always in the background. I'm going to be like that, love. This is where I want to be, here with you. Doesn't mean I'm still not worried about Pat. Hmm. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Sure. I said no, didn't I? I'm sorry. Thank you for coming over, but I'd just rather be on my own at the moment. You sure you don't want to talk about it? Okay. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, then. You will be all right. I can believe it when you called that. It's the best news I've had in ages. <laughs> Look at home, Mum. Thanks, Luke. Oh. <laughs> well, I brought something to celebrate. You know, when I got transferred down here, this is what I hoped would happen. The whole family back together. You don't know how happy I am. Yeah, we're pretty happy ourselves, <laughs> aren't we? Huh? Well, what about Kevin Lynn? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> there is one thing, one of the reasons I've asked you over. Patricia's taken it pretty badly. Yeah, well, when we've knocked this off, I'll get over it. Oh, it wouldn't be a good idea. Angie's with her, and the last thing she'd want is a heap of people around her. It'd only be me. Yeah, I'll let it go till later. It'll be better. Okay. Anyway, don't want to miss out on the big welcome home dinner. <laughs> don't expect anything too fancy. I haven't had time to draw a breath. Yeah, well, you should have left rearranging the cupboards for tomorrow. <laughs> I had like things stacked in my kitchen the way I like them. <laughs> anyway, Come hope on. you can still find the champagne glasses. Uh, 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 uh. Careful, careful. No, no. no more for me. I'm giggling it up already. Oh, well, do you good, Curly. I thought Come you would have got used to the place of it, especially living with Fiona. No, not really. Not that I want to try. But... <laughs> anyway, I can't sit here all night. I promised Kev I'd cook his favourite uh, meal. Oh, relax. It won't take you long to cook snags. <laughs> yeah, you got another one whether you like it or not. Here we go. You know, I think he's got even more bossy since I've been away. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're too late. Shampers is off. Oh, I don't want any. Uh, how is she? Not good. I'd, I'd better go to her. No, leave it till later. Oh, she said she wanted to be by herself for a while. All right. Uh, I think I'd better do something about getting the meal on. Any helpers would be appreciated. I'll be out in a minute. I know how hard she'll be taking it. She hasn't talked about anything else but her and Dad getting together again. She was really convinced it was going to happen. Yeah. Well, let's just hope she pulls herself out of it. I'll see what I can do when I get home. Not looking forward to it, though.
thought you'd gone to work. I didn't want to leave till I saw you. You were asleep when I got in last night. Uh, I took some sleeping pills. They knocked me out pretty quickly. How are you feeling? Vile. Sleeping pills and whiskey don't really mix very well. well having a cigarette on an empty stomach's not going to help either. Yeah. Thought you would have been up ages ago. To be in Sydney, the board meeting. Oh, that. <laughs> Forgotten all about it. I couldn't care less who they made managing director. Would you like me to stay with you today? No. Well, I could easily work at home. I'd rather you didn't. Well, then let me make you breakfast. John, I'd just like to be on my own, okay? Okay. See you tonight. Home. I've been sacked. Well, what for? Sticking up for a customer once too often. As soon as I walked in, the manager grabbed me. Happened yesterday. Someone must have told him. Oh. oh at least you're honest. And don't worry about it. You hated the job anyway. Yeah, but the trouble is, it's not going to be easy finding another one. Oh, no, you will. There's always truck driving. Hmm. Looks as though it's a good thing you and John did the groundwork. Oh, would you like a cup of coffee? Why not? Oh, a letter came for you. Thanks. Something wrong? Oh, no, it's from Kerry. I know. Thanking me. She used the money I sent to buy Domini some clothes. A few toys. Great. I'm out of a job and I've got two families to support. You'll get another job. Eh, yeah, even if it is driving a truck. That's if I can get my licence. Oh, well, John seemed to think there'd be no problems. Let's hope he's right, eh? I don't know how you can study with that thing on. Pardon? I said I don't know how you can study with that thing oh, on. Yeah, easy. In my day, we needed all the peace we could get. Oh, Mum. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> I don't know how you take any of the in. Easy. Uh, mm. How do you think you'll go with your exam? Don't ask. I haven't been able to concentrate for the past few months. Oh, you'll be all right now, love. Good thing you had that swat back. Yeah. Just hope I don't let everyone down. Well, get stuck into it and make sure you don't. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Chocolate cake. Won't say no to that, will we, Kev? No way. Haven't had any of this since you left. I thought Lynn was all right with top chocolate cake. Uh, <laughs> well, not one of yours. Well, I won't tell her that if you get back to studying. Oh, um, yeah. You haven't got a couple of weeks off for nothing, you know. You've got a lot to catch up on. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I tell you, it's going to be good to have the cake tins full again. Oh, this is all I'll have time for today, love. Mm. I hope you don't mind, but I thought I'd go up to Massenden this afternoon. Stay over. Well, Mum and Dad have been pretty worried. I'd like to put their mind at rest and let them know everything's back to normal. That's a good idea. I do feel a bit like I'm running away again, though. Ah, don't be silly. I understand. It just means we'll have to wait a bit longer for the cake tins to be filled. <laughs> Champagne ready, Rosie. Yeah. Oh. You are now looking at the new managing director of Ramberg Industries. Ta-da! <laughs> I knew you didn't have anything to worry about. I bet she was furious. She wasn't there. Didn't even send a proxy vote. Oh, that's funny. Well, 
David and Beryl getting back together again was probably the reason. <laughs> she wouldn't have liked that one little bit. She's probably sulking. And who cares? Gordon won. That's all that matters. I knew he would. I've already planned the menu for tonight. Celebration dinner. Oh, you were pretty confident. <laughs> I think we should plan another dinner. Have everybody who should be here. Oh, good idea. Come on, Paul. Come and let's get our heads together. Okay, by you, Rosie? Oh, of course it is. I can handle anything like that as long as I'm given enough notice. Good. You, uh, could invite Barbara Armstrong. Rosie, she's in Melbourne. Well, that's no reason to say that she wouldn't come back if you asked her. We'll see. There will be a lot of people, Rosie. Well, we can't ask the board members without their wives, too. Oh, I can handle it. The church socials at Wombai weren't small, you know. Uh, as long as you can cope. Oh, don't go on about it. You're starting to sound like Patricia. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> I'm glad some of the people from Paul's work are coming. I've been wanting to meet them for ages. Do you think you can have my dress finished in time? I'll try. Uh, maybe we should change the style. Make it a long one. It might look more... Dressy? Yeah. I think we'll leave it as it is. We've spent long enough looking for a pattern you liked. I don't think I could go through it again. Oh, but is it going to look all right? Of course it is. Don't worry about it. How's the dinner shaping up? Oh, fine. Do you want to throw in your six pennant? Six pennant? Oh, go on. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm going for a swim. Be able to manage, Rosie? Of course I can. Oh, well, you're lucky you've got Gail to give you a hand. We won't need extra people to help serve. the way it sounded. You reckon? I wanted to be his partner. I'd spend the night in the kitchen. I thought it'd be a good chance to get to know some of his friends. Oh, don't upset yourself, love. I'm supposed to be his girlfriend. With Gail. You and she supposedly going together. Anyone can see it's a joke. I can't dump her. People have been doing that to her all her life. Oh, if that's the way you feel, fine. But don't go being nice to her one minute and then brushing her off the next. Oh, she might be only 17, but she does have feelings like anyone else. If you are going to play the Good Samaritan, do it properly. Mother, it might help if you talk about it. I don't want to. I think you've had enough. I would like to have another drink. No, right? you don't. By the look of you, you've done nothing else all day. You haven't even bothered to get dressed. I don't understand. Try me. If the man that you had given up everything for just suddenly walked out on you, would you bother getting dressed? I mean, would you bother? I love David. I wanted him. I've always wanted him. I thought I had him. When we were together at Wombai. I went back to her. I was determined she wasn't going to have him, frowsy little housewife. I was going to get him back. Went down to Melbourne a few times, just happened to bump into him. Made sure Gordon kicked me out so that I could be down there with him. Oh, darling, I'm rambling. I think you're right. I've had a, a bit too much to drink. You lied to me. You let me think Daddy was responsible. He was. Darling, just 
Look at him and Barbara Armstrong. You have no idea the way he Mother. treated me. Angela, I'm... I'm upset. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. How could you do that to Daddy? He loved you. Well, I love David. Well, you... you must understand that. You've been in the same situation yourself. Angela, understand. Please. Please, you've got to understand. I can't understand that, Mother. Not doing that to Daddy. You must have known how much it had hurt him. Oh, please. Angie! What's going on? I'll tell you later. John, you won't leave me, will you? Please don't leave me, too. Wow, before that happened, she seemed to be crying real crocodiles, but Angela managed to hit home. Now, don't start feeling sorry for her. She's the same Pat the Rat who stopped David getting to Curly when she was miscarrying, and she's the same Pat the Rat who vultured after James Shepard's money. And she's just called Beryl a frowsy little housewife. What does frowsy mean? Frumpy and lousy? No, Bungle's the real hero today. Thank goodness she's back. Baby Davy got to have his crib in the front room and even got to be picked up by somebody. And what a hero to come home and rearrange the kitchen cupboards. An example to all women, I think. Now, if you could ask David Palmer anything, what would it be? I'm hoping Tom Richards himself will come in for a chat when he's over next month, so do let me know. And when they have that party for the board next week, finally, finally, I'll play you Lindsay Nancy's stuff. Do you think Gail was really crying about Paul's attitude or about his kimono? What a shocker.